First of all, thank you for giving me a chance and clicking on the video. And I know it won't be regretted. This video is about a book. A book that was a bestseller in its time and is said to have inspired the high budget movie named Thugs of Hindustan. This video is about this book. Confessions of a Thug by Philip Mido Taylor. And I assure you, this book is a blockbuster in itself. While reading this book, a reader's discretion is recommended. Because this book does contain some explicit descriptions of the crimes committed here under. Let me reassure you that the story is more than a crime. The story is of a person who commits such crimes and what does he think while doing it. Often while reading the newspapers or listening to the news, we think to ourselves who would do such a thing. After reading this book, you will know who would, they would. And this is not some gloomy disclaimer, it's just a fact and a story is is always more than a fact. A story is a life and let's dive into the life of Amir Ali, a thug. Story is of a boy who at a tender age of five becomes a victim of the most cruel profession, thuggy. And how as the story progresses, he turns from a victim to a perpetrator. The story follows the life of Amir Ali and how he became a thug, how he killed his first victim and overcame the hesitation of killing another human being. The story follows his adventures, his experiences. We see how his story changes from a lavish life to a mere existence. Apart from thugs, the story also tells us about the various criminals like Pindaris and Dakus that are decoys. The story tells us about loyalty that the thugs had for each other and also the betrayal that existed and that ultimately destroyed the thugs. The story tells us how a thug loves because he doesn't love as a criminal, he loves as a human being, just like any other human being how he has different relationships and different affairs. In all three, he has love at first sight, he has love of a lifetime, and he has a torrid affair, a scandalous affair. The story tells us how a thug kills without remorse, but it also tells us how a thug grieves for the death of his own. How a thug can kill numerous people without the blink of an eye and how one death, one death can change everything for a thug. The story tells us the weight of guilt that Amir Ali lives with or rather exists with. The one death, a death that he cannot reverse and a death that he regrets. A death that makes him think that he is in the wrong profession. The story is how a thug deceives and how a thug is deceived. The story is how Amir Ali is created as a thug and the story tells us how he is destroyed. The story tells us he is caught and punished. But the universe, the karma has a different way and a more cruel way of punishing. And we see that he is punished. And justice is done. We see how he is caught three times and how he walks away each time. We see how he kills and we see how he survives. We see a human being turned criminal. We feel a moral contradiction while reading his life story because we as a reader start relating to the character of Amir Ali. We feel bad for him in his misfortunes and we feel bad for feeling bad for a criminal. 
But my dear friends, let me get you out of this moral conflict and tell you, you don't feel bad for the criminal. You feel bad for the human that Amir Ali is. The story connects the reader and the criminal at a level beyond crime. It connects us on a human level. Amir Ali's story is a mixture of every emotion and every aspect that makes a Bollywood movie a blockbuster. Talking about whether this book inspired the movie or not, I personally say that the only thing common between the movie and the book is the word thug and the name thugs of Hindustan which has been mentioned two times in the book itself. Other than that, the movie is a wholly different story and the book is a wholly different story. And I personally feel in my opinion that if this book was made into a movie, it would have been a great, a great movie from historical point of view and from entertainment point of view both. One more thing that I would like to clear about the thugs is that thugs were no patriots. Before the Britishers, they used to kill Indians. And after the Britishers came, they rarely attacked any Britishers because Britishers were usually armed and had no jewelry on them. And it would risk being exposed attacking a Britishers, hence they rarely attacked them. And another thing, when your elders tell you the times have changed for the worse, it was better in their times, read this book and you'll know that you're lucky to be alive in this century. Other than that, read this book, understand what thuggy is, what a thug is. This book is historically a great, great read. Once I finished the book, I felt that it was worth the reading. It expanded my horizon. It made me think. And I personally feel any book that makes you think, it's a good book to read. So that's Confessions of a Thug for you. And Ishita signing off.